रहमान रहीम अस्सलाम वालेकुम एंड अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग आई एम योर होस्ट हाजर सती एंड जॉइनिंग मी इज माय को होस्ट फहीम बंगेश अस्सलाम वालेकुम फहीम एंड हाउ आर यू डूइंग ऑन दिस फाइन सनी मॉर्निंग इन इस्लामाबाद वेल वालेकुम अस्सलाम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंड आई एम वेरी वेल थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड वेल आई विल नॉट से मच अबाउट मंडे मॉर्निंग्स बिकॉज़ मंडे मॉर्निंग्स आर यूजुअली यू नो द टफेस्ट बिकॉज़ यू आर कमिंग बैक फ्रॉम अ वीकेंड यू वेक अप लेट इन द वीकेंड्स एंड आई डोंट नो अबाउट यू आई डोंट थिंक यू wake up late on the weekends yeah so i'm not uh, i mean uh, i'm a morning person i know right yeah i'm not a night owl but having said so i think uh, there is certain sort of a dread that is associated with the monday so whether you are working or whether you yes. are not working because that is the start of the week and you have to fa- face all of the work stuff and workload and if you are a student you have to go to your universities colleges or academic institutes and whatever but i think we had a very pleasant uh, weekend especially in islamabad because it was raining weather wise yes. yes yes and uh, the, it was very intense sun which was shining its light on us but i think the rain had uh, weakened its impact a little bit but also one of the thing that distinguished this weekend was it was observed as the mothers day right yes. and um, mothers day or motherhood is something a feeling an emotion um, or something very innate which allah subhanahu wa taala has instilled in a lot of mothers right so when we talk about the mothers day when we talk about the motherhood i think it is the most unconditional love that we associate with something or with a person called mother right and and you know hajra when a, when a woman goes through that whole process mm-hmm. it is simply amazing it is a miracle that allah subhanahu wa taala has uh, mm-hmm. instilled in uh, a pati- um, not a particular woman any woman i mm-hmm. would say any fertile woman mm-hmm. and that experience is equals none other uh, no other experience in the world because uh, it is empowering it is the love that you feel with the fetus and then with your baby that overpowers every other thing in the world and then allah subhanahu wa taala also says that that they uh, all the sins of the mother are forgiven when she delivers a baby and of course uh, uh, the the rare child rearing the feeding that i think the caregiving is associated with the motherhood and this is the love the unconditional love that allah subhanahu wa taala has associated with his love and and, and hajra before we move on i'm sure you too and i too i i i mean i have to wish my mother a belated happy mothers day for that and all the beautiful mothers who are out there and uh, who celebrated who have children who are there to wish them a happy mothers day right and i think there is one thing a profession that is also associated with the caregiving which is yes. a primary function of motherhood and that is the profession of nursing and i think it is one of the very underrated profession because uh, nursing or the nurses are one of the people or one of the profession that considers the backbone of the healthcare system so without nurses you will find that the healthcare system would collapse and we it find so many countless inspiring stories of the nurses uh, especially who were fighting the unseen enemy called covid-19 and we've seen that there are multiple tales um, the unsung heroes that span forth uh, within the covid time and i think that was a, that was a time that we actually realized the importance of the nursing which has been under the cover for so many years in this very beautiful profession and uh, i think hajra without further ado i think we must introduce our wonderful and esteemed guests for today's program First of all, we have uh, Miss uh, Catherine Borden. She is Chief of Nursing in Marov International Hospital, and has a lot of accolades to her name. Uh, Miss Catherine, welcome to PTV World, and a very good morning. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me here. And um, I would like to introduce myself. I am Catherine, and I graduated my BSN degree at the Central Philippine University, and I was a scholar of the CIAJET. and um my master's degree as well is in in philippines and i work here in pakistan for almost 17 years now and that's wow. wonderful and yeah. i think wow. we will further more explore that why she particularly chose to serve in pakistan uh, but we would also need to introduce our other worthy and esteemed guests who are here to talk on this uh, day that we are particularly observing as the uh, world nursing day because the theme of this year is our nurses our future economic power of the care and uh, joining miss catherine we are very glad that we have been joined by mr fahad salim he happens to be a registered nurse in the usa dubai and pakistan and was also pre-registered in uk assalam alaikum fahad and thank you so much for coming to our show wa alaikum assalam thank you so much for having me here it's an honor to share the stage with you both and with two of the best in my profession 
Thank you so it's much. It's a Thank pleasure you. having you here, uh, Fahad. And our third esteemed guest happens to be uh, Dr. Kainat Asmat. She is a PhD in nursing, and she also holds a master's degree in psychology. So, Dr. Kainat, welcome to PTV World, and a very good morning. Thank you so much, Fahad. Thank you for having me at your show and to share the stage with uh, my other nursing professionals. Right, and I think now Wonderful. let's uh, develop this conversation further and let's explore mm. why do we <coughs> need to observe this particular day and we would like to ask Ms. Catherine here who choose to serve in Pakistan for the past 70 year, 17 years and why does she choose Pakistan, number one, and also why is there need to observe this particular day, the World Nursing Day? So Ms. Catherine, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Um, well, um, mostly people ask me, why Pakistan? Hmm. Why not you go in any other country like USA or UK? Yeah, yeah. So my answer is always, why not? Hmm. Okay, I believe that uh, working in a developed country, hmm. they have everything. True. But in Pakistan, when I started, <coughs> my reason why I come here to Pakistan is like, to be honest, a stepping stone that, <coughs> that might be, I, I mean, I, Pakistan will be my stepping stone to go in any other country as well, just mm -hmm. like to cross country. Mm -hmm. But when I started uh, the College of Nursing, and then I was the clinical instructor, mm -hmm. when I started teaching the young ones, mm -hmm. I have seen their eagerness. You know, they are hungry of when it comes to education. Right. So that motivates me and inspires mm. me. Then why I should serve the developed countries? Mm -hmm. mm. Why not serving Pakistan? Mm. So m they said that no, Pakistan is, uh, is a different country, third world country. I said it's not about their country. It's mm -hmm. not about the culture. Mm. It's about my profession, mm -hmm. that I can do mm -hmm. something. It's mm -hmm. not about the money I'm receiving, but it is all about what I can do and make a difference before be, uh, before I leave, I leave this world. Just like saying, the leave footprints, you know, sometimes it's, it is very, you know, um, worth uh, taking right, that right. decision. Thank yeah. you so much for saying that. Lovely. And I think, let's move to <coughs> Fahad, because for him, uh, nursing is a profession that we see, um, I think, is associated with lots of women, and that there's a saturation of women in this particular profession. And one of the reason a lot of feminist studies ascribe to women in the nursing is because women are very good at giving the caregiving, right? So we talked about motherhood, we talked about femininity, the womanhood, and it's very natural and innate thing in it, right? But there are lots of studies that are exploring that we need to have the gender inclusivity or gender sensitivity in this profession particularly. So Fahad, what prompted you to step into this particular field which is uh, so heavily associated with mm. the women? To be very honest, in the start when I got into the nursing profession, I was not too much you know, excited for it. Mm. Mm. But uh, when I got into it mm. and when I had the contact with the patient for the first time in my life, it was like a life-changing time because the patients, they give you a lot of prayers. They pray for you in front of them, they and as per, as per my mother, they pray for you behind your back as well. So it's they a satisfying profession. It's a satisfying profession, and it has a lot of opportunities all over the world, in Pakistan, in any other country. Just like you can see, I'm registered nurse in almost four countries. Hmm. How can I become f in registered nurse in four countries in one year? Because there are demands, there are opportunities. Yes. Right. And as far as male nursing goes, mm -hmm. nursing never asks for gender. It asks right. for care, mm -hmm. compassion, and education. True, true. Which uh, I have been giving a lot of it. Mm. But uh, I think more male nurses should come in this profession so, so that where females can't go, males should go. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So more males will get care, and that will be better for the country and for the nurses. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm moving forward to uh, Dr. Kainath Asmat. Uh, Dr. Kainath Asmat, you have done your PhD in nursing, right? First of all, uh, I would like to ask, uh, what partic particular degree do you have to do as far as nursing is concerned? And after doing that, what made you do your PhD? Uh, thank you so much, Fahad. I have done my PhD from, uh, in nursing, particularly in nursing discipline, from Shefa Tamir Millat University, Islamabad. And I must share uh, here that I am the proud product of Pakistan, along with uh, four other uh, graduates and PhD in nursing. Uh, two of them are produced by Al Khan University Hospital and three from Shefa Tamir Millat University, uh, my alma mater. And uh, I have done uh, my PhD uh, after completing my coursework and the research work, and particularly with regards to my research work, which I have conducted was a randomized clinical trial uh, about uh, self-management of type 2 diabetes patients. Mm -hmm. and on the basis of which, uh, 
I have been certified now to be a diabetes care and education specialist. So I am uh, improving the patient care outcomes who are with the type 2 diabetes conditions by, by educating them how they can take care of themselves or by motivating them, counseling them that how they can change their self behaviors. So uh, they will manage their type 2 diabetes and uh, in this way, uh, uh, the, the burden on the healthcare system, particularly on the hospitals, may be reduced by uh, my contribution uh, of being a diabetes care and uh, education right. specialist. Right. And, 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 you know, talking about uh, the pressure on the healthcare system, I mean, we can never forget uh, the sacrifices and the services that the healthcare uh, department gave in Pakistan and the world over, mm -hmm. especially in the COVID times, and right? I think uh, that was the period particularly where we were exposed or uh, that came into the forefront, which was always brushed under the carpet because they're so overworked and they have to provide the caregiving. So Ms. Catherine, now let's develop this conversation. And since you have been associated in the past with the Ministry of the Health, then you've also been associated with revamping the nursing sector. So what are some of the gaps that you identified in Pakistan's nursing profession? And how did you uh, fill, try to fill that gaps when you were associated with that reforms? Well, um, when it comes to the talking about the gap, mm -hmm. um, the first probably is the time of the education. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if I will compare it to the other countries, the education time is too short. Okay. And uh, what is it in Pakistan? In Pakistan is like <coughs> we would say from eight to two, but in other countries, like for example, my country, mm -hmm. uh, we started our academic class from seven a.m. and then we ended at six forty in the afternoon. Okay. I see. So. And then on the other hand, uh, so, so isn't it, that burdening the students a lot? I mean, what are the implications it, of that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, since um, in Pakistan, the education is not, uh, I cannot compare it to the others because you have your own, your, your own system. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. If the discipline of the education will not start from the young, young ones, okay. you know, from the youngers, it should start it so that they will not, I know they will not be. I mean, overwhelmed that uh, when we started our classes, why when we are young, we started at 8 to 2 o'clock. And then why when you're, when you're growing, why we have to go for 12 hours or maybe 10 hours? I mean, what, I mean, how are we going to absorb everything? Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. So, um, talking about the gap, not only in the training, mm -hmm. maybe in education, and I believe that uh, to some extent, uh, training and education comes from home, basically, mm -hmm. yes and the discipline and the standard of uh, education. Mm -hmm. One is the curriculum is set. Everything is available for Pakistani. The point is that we just need to help them to implement it. How are we going to go? How, what, what other strategy that we have to, you know, to, uh, to plan in order for us to, uh, I mean, to develop the when it comes to nursing profession right. pakistani as what i have always said mm -hmm. mostly mm -hmm. not if i'm not say 100 percent skilled is there they are so skillful you will amaze every day of their skills right but they have they need a group or a team or i would say an academic or a support from the government in order mm. for them to you know uh to direct their way or their path mm. in mm. a proper manner to utilize their skills mm. you know in a way that it is i mean acceptable when it comes to internationally standard probably mm -hmm. but as what i said pakistan is not the least among what you have heard in any other countries right, right. pakistan has its own unique uniqueness when it comes to skills especially in nursing mm. we just need to now uh, again i would iterate it that government should help specifically uh, nursing profession in Pakistan. We need to motivate people. Right. Uh, 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 in uh, Pakistan. Catherine, uh, talking about the government now, uh, we know that you have worked in the private sector and you have worked in the government oh, sector as well, yeah, as far as Lady Reading Hospital in Peshawar is concerned. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as far as we know that uh, there is a lot of burden as far as the government yeah. hospitals are concerned. Uh, what difference do you find among uh, the government and the private institutions, the healthcare institutions, and uh, how have you managed? Okay, uh, that is very challenging, you know, because I work most of my time in Pakistan for 
uh, in the private sector for almost, I would say, like 13 years, mm -hmm. and then uh, working in a government setup for almost a couple of like four years. So the difference is the number of patients that the nurse is uh, taking care. Mm -hmm. For the private sector, the standard is followed, one is to five. Maybe the most is one is to six because of the shortage of nurses. Right. But when it comes to uh, public sector, they are taking care of the patient like 14, 20, 30 wow. probably. Yeah. So amazing. the burden is there mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they are even, um, uh, w uh, what do you call this one? Like, um, they are on the front line and they uh, mostly of the people have a different individual differences, their attitudes and how, you know, how, how the nurses are being, uh, how the nurses are being bullied most of the time, especially in the mm -hmm. public sector, you know, so like if there's a rush, for example, I, I will, uh, my, one of my experiences, there is a blast and then you all has to go rush yourself to the emergency room. There are some people that you will receive it. So I mean to say that the burden on the nurses, really, they, People should understand, especially mm -hmm. the government sector needs to increase the number of nurses in the public sector and also in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And they have to pay attention on the, uh, their you know, salary maybe because this motivates them not only for the salary, maybe to motivate them as well to uh, proceed mm -hmm. to, you know, like just well like that is a factor, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I think exactly. this is a very important point yeah. which Ms. Catherine raised is that uh, this profession, the profession of nursing is very understaffed and they're very overburdened when it comes to taking care of the patients out there. So now, and also let's develop this conversation further on these lines because um, Fahad, when I was graduating or when I was in my FSC, so I see that there were flocks of students, many and many who are rushing to go to the medical schools and they were preparing for that. And there's generally a zeal of, uh, you know, which you witness among the students and they want to become doctors, right? Mm. But um, I hardly came across anyone who wants to be a nurse, right? So why do you think, is it because of a taboo? Is it because of some sort of stigma? Why do you think that that in Pakistan, nursing is a very understaffed, I would say, a profession, and there's abundance of doctors, right? Or there are multiple <coughs> medical universities, medical schools who are churning a lot of doctors out there, but I don't see the same zeal for the nursing. Why is that so? I think it's both a stigma and a taboo okay. that. Uh, and how do you address that? Yeah. When a child is born, mm -hmm. when a kid is born, mm -hmm. you are like uh, you or become, doctor, a doctor, yeah. become a doctor, become yes. a doctor, yeah, True. serve the people, mm -hmm. be a patriot. Right, mm. become a go to army, serve the people, be a patriot. Right. What does nurse do? Nurse cares for the people, True. cares yeah. for the patients, mm. treats them, and but they are not considered patriot. I never heard in my like uh, 18 years mm. of life before nursing that going to nursing or be a nurse, be care, be caring, be kind. When we say be caring, be kind, we are like be like a doctor, be a doctor. True. So that's how you you have to start raising your kids like that. Mm -hmm. You have to start telling them, mm -hmm. like, there is something known as a nurse. Mm -hmm. A kid doesn't know. A kid just goes with you to the hospital. You have to tell them, like, what does a nurse do? Right. I visited U.S. twice, and in both those times, uh, Halloween was there. Like, mm -hmm. th that time was around, and people were like dressing up as nurses, and I was impressed by that. My nephew, they were asking me, how do you become a nurse? So that motivated me. No one asked me here. Okay. But they do mm. because they know their parents have taught them mm. what's the importance, mm. what does the nurse do, mm. and that kind of inspired me more and more and more. So that's how we we have to do it with our own children. Like True. we have to, it will not come overnight. No, no change can come overnight. It will take generations. Yeah. Right now we are getting more nursing nurses. Mm. Right now we are, we have more universities now. We have more colleges now mm. approved by the PNC. But mm. it will take some time. Right. And uh, I, I want to add it here that if th we have an internship, if you know, after four years of four years of graduation, uh, four years of study, we have to do one year internship. Okay. So it's a, just a suggestion that if we reduce it down, like if we take it like a six months of internship, maybe there will be more nurses, uh, like uh, in six month time. Mm -hmm. Right now, in 2021, there was a survey, and according to the survey, there are total one nurse for 40 patients as per I see. in 2021 as per survey however the pnc the pakistan nursing council mm -hmm. they suggest that one nurse on three patients okay so that's how much shortage like that's just an example mm. of what we are facing right now right. and you can just imagine that but as far as your question goes i think 
parents should start this and then maybe in coming years, in coming decades, this will come up. It will not come overnight, not in the year. It will come, it will take time, and, but it will. And then again, uh, children should be able to decide for themselves what they yeah. want to go Don't, for yeah. as far as professions are concerned. Don't force ideas. It's a very good profession. I am right. I didn't know about it by 18. Now I love it. I don't also, want to change it. Also, now uh, moving on to Kaina Saiba, uh, mm -hmm. like my wife happens to be a doctor. I see how difficult it is, how she has to do the long shifts, mm -hmm. uh, the night shifts. And it's pretty disturbing, not just for her, but for the child, for the family. People have to uh, adapt themselves according to that situation, mm -hmm. that particular schedule. How uh, tiring do you think it gets for the nurses? Because what I have observed, the uh, working hours are longer for the nursing staff as compared to the doctors. And how do you people uh, generally cope up with that? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, before uh, moving to the answer to your question, I just want to conclude uh, the responses given by my colleagues. Please uh, do. While connecting it, it to, um, uh, with this year's theme, which uh -huh. is uh, like our nurses, our future, the economic power of care. Mm -hmm. So this, why this theme has been chosen, I believe, uh, like uh, as uh, Fahad was talking about like uh, whether to become doctor or nurse, you have initiated the conversation. I think the debate should not be around becoming doctors or becoming nurses. Mm -hmm. uh, every member of healthcare team has its own position, has its own discipline or profession. Mm -hmm. So every professional of health uh, care system uh, is complementing to each other. Yeah. Okay. So ultimately right. our uh, goal is to improve patient healthcare outcome. So each single effort of uh, nurses mm -hmm. or doctors or pharmacists or whatever is the member of healthcare team would be improving the patient uh, care outcome mm -hmm. and ultimately the economy of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we were talking about producing more nurses, uh, like uh, to address the shortage of the nurses, I must say here uh, and caution here that uh, in order to talk about the quantity, we should also uh, consider yeah, the quality uh, uh, yes. nurses which yes. are uh, going to be produced in the future, inshallah. True. So for that, the government and policy makers should need to invest particularly in the quality of nursing education. Right. As we believe that uh, um, the kind of knowledge, the kind of expertise or the competent nursing professional can take care uh, of the patient and can improve the proper uh, healthcare outcome of that patient. Definitely. And uh, this uh, again uh, would be uplifting our economy in the future right and i think and that's in yes sure sure go ahead uh, <laughs> thank you uh, i would like to give uh, answer uh, to uh, your question like uh, the duty hours of doctors are less yes. and uh, for nurses are uh, higher long, or yes. more mm. but uh, this is not the situation this is not the case duty hours are same for doctors and for nurses mm. and for every other healthcare profession yeah professional who is working in the hospital or beyond that. Mm -hmm. So if, if we talk about the particular role of nurses in the hospital, uh, doctors also have six hours duty hours in the government hospitals and uh, nurses <coughs> have same. But in certain private sector uh, sectors, nurses have eight hours shift mm -hmm. and also the doctors. Bro. So the duty timings are uh, not different uh, mm -hmm. for nurses and as well as doctors. But when we talk about nurses as, uh, as professionals, I must say that this uh, profession is very much fulfilling and rewarding. Whenever a nurse is performing duty on the patient and taking right. proper care of that patient, uh, the, the patient is appreciating her work, is appreciating her task being provided on uh, uh, his bedside. <coughs> and then ultimately, uh, when the patient condition improves, mm -hmm. the patient uh, is uh, bestowing her with very much uh, prayers. So it is very rewarding and fulfilling. And, and the moment uh, a nurse uh, sees the improvement in the patient condition, it fulfills her and yeah. it boosted her with the energy. So she is ready to work even more six hours. Wonderful, and wonderful. I, I think that is one of yeah. the wonderful uh, qualities to have, uh, specifically when you invested in the profession of nursing, which is the empathy because you need to treat your patient and make sure um, that the per patient is not just getting the health care, but also the psychological aspect, the psychological care. And I think we would like to further develop this conversation because uh, giving a psychological care or bestowing empathy on someone also takes a toll on your own mental health. So how do you yes. keep up with that, right? That's mm. very much important. So after a short break, we are going to discuss this on these lines. So don't go anywhere. Mm.
And welcome back to World This Morning. And today we are celebrating the International Nursing Day. And uh, Hajra, before going to the break, raised a very pertinent point regarding mental health, something that's really, really close to my heart. So, Miss Catherine, as Hajra was mentioning that while taking care of someone, you have to give a part of yourself to the other person. You have to have that sort of empathy for the other person, sympathy for the other person. And that takes a lot of toll on your mental health. So could you share some of your experiences when that actually happened with you? Because I'm sure you've been working in the COVID days as well, which were very, very pressurizing. Yeah, I, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, how to overcome the stress or maybe how to overcome uh, those challenges in order for you to do it, maybe to me, mindset. Hmm. Because I need to, you know, I need to uh, prepare myself before I go to a hospital or maybe to do my duty. The reason for that is we are always dealing with a different, you know, different attitudes of the individuals. Mm -hmm. So if your mindset is a positive that you are there in order, we like we say uh, maximum tolerance. Mm -hmm. So I have to do it, especially I am for example, when I knew to Pakistan, there are a lot of barriers, communication barriers, of course, you know, of the course. culture culture shock is there. So in order for me to uh, work in a positive way, so I have to uh, be present, Mind, mindset is there. Psychologically, I have to, uh, I mean, um, balance myself. And that then how after do you do that? that? Do you remain grounded and also what? as not to, I mean, lose your own mind because I'm pretty sure the way you must be bombarded with lots of patient and the healthcare that you yeah, have to Yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. what, uh, I will tell you what's, what is my routine, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. When, I, when I will be, uh, when, before I go to the hospital, as what I said, mindset, I have to think that I am away from my family. Mm -hmm. So it should be like, I should be flexible. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, yeah, I should adapt to whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. So that is the mindset that, I, that is always in my mind. So whatever negative that comes to me, so I just like, it's just like a ball mm -hmm. that maybe just bounce back because my mind is already set that I have to expect for the worst, but I have to hope for the better. Right. And then at the end of the day, I know that it's too stressful. I have to find my comfort zone as well. Like for example, talking to my family, going some, you know, some shopping to pamper myself. Right. And then I make sure that I live in a quality life that I have to uh, uh, take care of myself as well. Right. Self-care is very important. Self-care is Absolutely. very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, uh, Fahad, uh, you uh, work in the emergency of uh, uh, Shifa Hospital. Now, we know that, uh, like Ms. Catherine was also mentioning, that you get all sorts of patients, right? Mm -hmm. Could you share uh, one of your experiences where you were really, really annoyed with someone, but you had to give in your best, mm -hmm. since that's the requirement of your profession? Okay, so I'll share some as an example. As you said, we are understaffed and we are undervalued True. at times. True. Uh, now we are getting some value. But uh, once there was a patient, so the patient was like, had a heart attack. Okay. He was a young patient and he, he, was, uh, he came to the hospital with the family and he was collapsed. So he, we had to just pick him up, put him in the stretcher and one of my colleague, we, it was me and my colleague, and one of my colleague, he jumped into the bed and started the compressions mm -hmm. like you have to save the patient at any cost mm -hmm. and he was a young young patient with no comorbids with no other disease right, right. so that's and that's very alarming nowadays that young people are getting heart attacks yes right. and they're dying that's true. and i have just uh, i know around five of those people mm -hmm. this year who have died of heart attack so i think that's very alarming so we rec we like did 30 minutes of compressions on that patient in ramadan mm -hmm. like it was the time of fasting and it was like around 12 PM, so you know how that time of the day is during Amazon. Right. Yes. So, and 30 minutes of like C uh, B uh, BLS is like a big thing. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot out of you. So yes. Takes a lot out of you. <laughs> Compressions are very hard. So and uh, that patient survived. Alhamdulillah, we did our well. The patient survived. Now we had to send the patient for the surgery, and the pa and family was like, uh, "What did you do in this thing? Like, apne kiya hi kya hai? Thik hai? Ye to upar wale kiya." So we were like, "Yes, of course." Allah did it, but we were the carriers through which He did it. Uh, but uh, like these are kind of patients, and you have to do it. Yeah. And sometimes we have like uh, patients who, 
like you in emergency department you have all kinds of patients exactly you have patients who are very sick you have patient who is 22 year old with a f fever now their fa his family thinks he's sick the person who's really sick their family their family thinks they are sick you as a nurse or as a doctor or as a healthcare professional you have to treat both of them equally mm -hmm. you can't see you can't say mm -hmm. or oh, you are not that sick mm -hmm. you have to say right. yes you are sick mm -hmm. we have priorities in our emergency department but we deal every patient with a simp simple single approach, guest. Our management has put us through this, like a guest acronym. It's like G for greeting, you have to greet the I patient. See. U for understanding the patient, A for eye contact with the patient, S for smile, and T for thank you in the end. Lovely. So Lovely. That's pretty much very good thing that we have. Mm. So we do it on every patient. Sometimes we don't, we couldn't do it because the influx is too much. Like she said, she said it can be a bomb blast. Mm. At that time, we just have to do things like in government sector. It's too much. You you can't like be in a decision making team in government sector according to me because the patient flux is too high. You can't just do practical work. But in sh in Shifa in private institutes, you can be a part of decision making and you can deal with the patient. You can consult the patient. It takes a toll on your mental yeah, health, like yeah. you said. Yeah. But uh, being there for someone during the shift, we are like. What can I do? So you have wow. to wholeheartedly put your effort yeah. into it. Otherwise, it will not work. Mm -hmm. The patient will not be satisfied, you will not be satisfied. That's if you are really into your nursing, mm -hmm. you will not be satisfied by the end of the shift that this pa I didn't put much effort into this patient. You mm -hmm. have to deal every patient equally. That's mm -hmm. very true. And I think now let's move uh, forward to Dr. Kainath. Uh, so, Dr. Kainath, we are living in Pakistan and this is a society where people hold Islam as, as a very supreme value in their lives and I'm pretty sure uh, you must came across a lot of patients uh, who are victims of these fake quacks and fake spiritual healers and uh, I mean they fe fell prey to their you know very brutal sort of tactics where they're assuming it. So how do you integrate and obviously faith is an important part of their life. So how do you integrate um, the modern medicine and integrate it with the also um, the Tibbi Nabi or Islamic teaching so as to make sure that you're also making the patients comfortable while at the same time treating them uh, with the modern medicine. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this question. Mm. I'm just reflecting on my own experience mm. when I came across uh, with the certain similar kind of situation. Mm. I just uh, wanted to share uh, here a bit of my son. He was a CHD. He was congenital heart uh, defect. Okay. And at the time of his surgery, when I was with uh, him in the hospital while he was in the uh, ICU, and I was sitting along with the, uh, another mother mm -hmm. whose uh, child was also sick, and uh, he was booked for open heart surgery like my son okay. and she said that uh, uh, I am not getting my son uh, to uh, have an open heart surgery as my father-in-law has approached a spiritual healer right. and uh, we, we are just moving to that spiritual healer and uh, he will do a spiritual surgery mm -hmm. spiritual kind of operation mm -hmm. and this hole which is there in the heart of my son would be all closed mm -hmm. and we don't need to pay this much money for his yeah. surgery and yeah. this uh, this much uh, procedure mm -hmm. so I uh, at that time uh, as I was also kind of uh, in, in, in emotional state uh, and, and I am uh, a psychologist also I tried to counsel that mother mm -hmm. that this is an anatomical uh, like uh, structure default mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. need to be closed mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the help of the surgeon mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, moving uh, like going through uh, a particular procedure mm -hmm. I tried to counsel her <laughs> and then I met uh, to uh, her father-in-law mm -hmm. and tried to counsel them a lot that uh, like uh, they should uh, like allow uh, her right. or the son to mm. uh, get the surgery done mm. but they uh, didn't counsel and uh, they made their decision to leave the hospital without medical advice and but uh, what I just did is uh, like uh, I just uh, shared my contact with her and uh, like I, I have uh, asked him that I, I will call you and I will uh, get the update from you that what ha uh, had happened to your son. Mm -hmm. And can you believe on the very next day when I called to her, she was crying a lot and she was saying that I, my son is no more. Right. Uh, we went to that oh spiritual God. healer, he did the surgery and he said that go back to your home, like uh, stop every medication which your son is taking out and the surgery is done, your, your hole is closed and your son is all healthy now. And what uh, was there that his, her son was no more. And, and from that day, I have made my motive that I uh, 
will professionally like get into uh, like uh, getting the motivational interviews for the parents particularly with this condition and to counsel them and uh, i have been attached with the children heart foundation uh, since that time back in 2016 and right uh, like since then mm -hmm. i have been counseling the parents giving my own example uh, the example of my son like uh, they they get the surgeries done actually these things you know they happen to you so that you get a purpose in life like you just said you yes. have been associated with the heart foundation you have been counseling and yes. since you give your own example to uh, the parents they do understand that okay this person is empathetic this person yes. feels the pain that we have to go through so i i think uh, it's a blessing in disguise i would say finding a purpose yes. in life and that's that's amazing really exactly and uh, yes. viewers uh, uh, moving on next we have uh, a very special person that we have to wish a birthday to and that is isaac vikram gill who has turned one, one year today old. one year old and happy birthday uh, isaac vikram gillen we wish and hope that you become a responsible citizen and you continue to bring smile on the lives in the lives of your parents and the people around you so once again why don't we sing a song for him right absolutely happy birthday, birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear isaac Happy birthday to you. And may you have many, many, many more. Many more. And may you continue to shine forever. And I think we, with that, we will wrap up our segment. And we will uh, thank our worthy guests for coming here for celebrating and observing the International Nursing Day. And I think this is the profession um, that we, as a layman, came to uh, understand the problems, the challenges, the opportunities that they go through, especially after the COVID period. because it was a very very intense period and we've seen stories coming out that how nurses and doctors have to pick and choose which patients they have to put yes. the oxygen mask and which not and that is a very very difficult um position to be in particularly when you're picking and choosing the lives of your patients um and the challenges that they have to go through the stress they have to go through and i think they're very undervalued particularly in our society so it is high time that we mend our ways that we men are thinking and our mindsets particularly about the nursing profession because it is one of the most blessed profession where yes. you are uh, providing shifa to the people around you so and that, we really hope that the pnc takes into consideration all the suggestions all the uh, issues that were raised in today's program and with that we come to the end and thank you very much miss catherine so much. uh thank you, so thank you much. very much uh, fatsa and thank you very much uh, dr kainath Uh, it's it was an immense pleasure meeting all three of you today and uh, you, so you gave it a real boost our program today right and with that we will bid you farewell until next time it's a goodbye allah hafiz and good and morning and good morning